I don't know, somehow on YouTube I became known as the It's Never Aliens Anton. And that's because there's been a lot of videos I made where I basically tried to explain that some of the claims made in the media are pretty much never aliens. And it's a title I started to wear kind of proudly. And not because I enjoy raining on people's parades and enjoy being a contrarian, or because I hope that extraterrestrial intelligence doesn't exist, but because pretty much every single time for the past few decades that I started researching this, I'm forced to look at the cold, hard, statistical truth. And the statistical truth in this case is a serious buzzkill when it comes to trying to find anything, any intelligence, anywhere in the universe. And that's of course despite the fact of how extremely large the universe is. In this case, we're talking about the universe containing over 2 trillion galaxies, with each of these galaxies containing a few trillion planets. As a matter of fact, our own Milky Way possibly contains anywhere between 100 to 400 billion stars, with a few planets around each of these stars. And so here, even if worlds supporting life are somewhat rare in the universe, just the sheer numbers suggest that the entire universe should be teeming with intelligence, with at least some of this intelligence trying to communicate and trying to send out various signals. Mostly because, as we know from the evolution, normally any life typically starts expanding until it fills all of the available niches. And this massive conflict between observations and predictions is of course what we refer to as the Fermi paradox. The paradox between a massive amount of stars in the relatively old universe and the fact that we don't really see any evidence for anything anywhere. Just an echoing cosmic silence. At least in terms of scientific evidence and scientific facts. Forget about all those press releases and all of this nonsense in regards to comets being spaceships. And so here the question is, why the silence? And so, a wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to talk about some of the recent and somewhat intriguing studies, including studies from a few years back, that try to explore this idea from a more mathematical and statistical perspective, and provide us with a somewhat interesting but also somewhat disappointing conclusion. And I think this conclusion is probably pretty clear from the title of this video. And so today we're going to take a look at critical scientific arguments that tell us how rare intelligence truly is, and that focus on some of the most rigorous mathematical analysis, reinforcing the idea that we might be alone. For reasons we obviously don't know. But let's start with a bit of a history and some of the explanations from a few decades back, and how scientists previously tried to explain this Fermi paradox by just looking at what we know about our own planet. And while a lot of this thinking starts with Brendan Carter, an Australian theoretical physicist who mostly specialized in exploring properties of black holes, but who also back in 1983 explored the idea behind the formation of complex life on the planet. And here he pointed out a remarkable baffling coincidence. It took approximately 4.5 billion years for the intelligence to evolve on Earth. And here this is a coincidence because this is dangerously close to the total remaining habitable lifetime for our planet, and even for our Sun, which will start transitioning into its very dangerous stage in the next few billions of years. But even here on Earth, we don't actually expect it to stay habitable for longer than 1 billion years from today. And so here Brandon Carter argued that this coincidence suggests that the typical time required for evolution to produce intelligence is actually much, much longer very likely way longer than the lifespan of a typical star. And so his question was, why did we make it on time? And so this is where Carter came up with this idea known as the anthropic principle. Simply put, we observe the universe the way it is because if it was different, we would not be around to see it. Or basically, the universe appears just right for life, not by chance alone, but possibly because only in such a universe could we even exist. Now, he was mostly concerned with the properties of the universe, such as, for example, various cosmological constants, but in some of the recent studies this is also applied to the idea behind intelligence on the planet. And specifically here the idea that we basically won the lottery. Even if the odds for the intelligence are very low, for example, 1 in 100 trillion, we must by definition be on the single planet that won that cosmic lottery. Which of course puts everything in a completely different perspective basically making us the privileged ones in the entire universe. But specifically this argument also rests on the idea behind the so-called hard steps or evolutionary bottlenecks that sometimes are also referred to as the great filters. Basically these unique one-off adaptations that took surprisingly long to evolve, which do reinforce the idea that our existence may be incredibly improbable. Not impossible, just unlikely. 
And here we do have quite a lot of very specific steps or very specific achievements for the life itself. Most of this is summarized in this picture. First of all, we have the origin of life itself, the idea referred to as abiogenesis. This very likely started pretty quickly on a planet, but even today we're not entirely certain how. And for Earth, as far as we know, this only happened once. Obviously, we have no idea if it ever happened anywhere else. Then we have the origin of photosynthesis, the process that generates oxygen, which was also very likely a one-off event and possibly happened approximately two and a half billion years ago. We have the appearance of complex cells or eukaryotic cells, the cells that you and I are made out of, which also seems to have happened once and that surprisingly we kind of do understand now based on some of the recent discoveries from the last decade. If you'd like to find out more about this, check out some of the previous videos on the incredible discoveries from the Archaea Kingdom that should be somewhere in the description below. But there are some other limitations too sexual reproduction, evolution of complex life or complex animals, and of course, the last one being the human level of intelligence itself. And so today, most research and most studies agree that each of these individual steps was possibly extremely unlikely. And even if we assume that the chance for one of these steps to happen was only like 1%, if you were to stack all of these steps together, it would suggest that the probability of complex intelligent life to emerge would be incredibly small, possibly 1 in 100 trillion, if we're being very generous. But even here, the actual value is probably much smaller. With this recent paper even providing us with a kind of a window for human habitability, which even for our planet is surprisingly short. And as you can see, in the near future, no complex life is going to be able to survive. This is actually less than 500 million years in the future. And though the initial work by Brandon Carter was quite insightful, it still lacked a more rigorous approach and more statistical analysis that would be required to determine the exact likelihoods. But in 2021, a team of researchers including Andrew Snyder Beatty published a study that provided a rigorous mathematical framework using a Bayesian model to finally quantify just how rare intelligence is based on the timing of each of these evolutionary events on the planet. Or just to rephrase this, they managed to mathematically quantify each of these steps, essentially giving us an actual probability by trying to approach this from a purely mathematical perspective. And so here this model generalized some of these critical biological steps such as abiogenesis, sexual reproduction and intelligence and then analyze the time it took for these transitions to occur on our own planet. And while one of the more important discoveries from this analysis was not the actual number for each of the steps, but the fact that when using this logarithmic approach, and when admitting that we have no prior information about how easy or how hard each of these steps should be, in pretty much most cases, these calculations showed a kind of an asymmetry. Or just to rephrase this, here we can confidently rule out that each of these transitions was extremely fast. Because here the mathematical approach suggests that these transitions should be pretty slow and take a pretty long time to achieve. For example, if a step took 1 billion years in the fossil record, this model definitively rules out that this step should take a much shorter time somewhere else. So essentially we shouldn't really expect photosynthesis to appear much much faster if it took that long on our own planet. But the other discovery here was even more chilling, or I guess to some extent more confusing. Here the model discovered that the observed transition times are entirely consistent with the expectation that these transitions should take extremely long time, usually exceeding Earth's lifetime. So basically for each of these steps, we technically expect them to take much, much longer. And if you're asking why, well it's because of the observation selection effects from the previously discussed anthropic principle. Even if one evolutionary step is extremely rare, it can only happen on planets that got super lucky with this event actually happening there. Okay, it might sound kind of confusing, but in essence, the conclusion here is that the expected evolutionary transition resulting in intelligent life should actually exceed the entire lifetime of planet Earth and even the Sun, and in this case exceeded by several times, and especially in systems that would be different from planet Earth. But because this was based on mathematical models, they ran this several times. And as they ran these models for multiple transitions, for a three-step model, over 99% of parameters suggested less than 1% chance of intelligent life occurring within Earth's habitable lifetime. Or once again, there is less than 1% chance that intelligent life should have evolved here. And so the observed history of life on Earth provides powerful mathematical evidence that becoming an intelligent civilization is ultra rare, which kind of collaborates Brandon Carter's initial argument and once again suggests that the intelligent life in the entire universe seems to be exceptionally rare or possibly only exists in one place, 
right here. But obviously not everybody agrees with this, and some scientists have tried to challenge this as well. For example, one of the recent models proposed by the researchers from the Penn State University tries to see it slightly differently. Instead of viewing the timeline as a series of lucky breaks and basically just winning the lottery, they suggest that humanity's evolution was a natural consequence of Earth's evolving conditions. And the core argument in this recent study is that life doesn't just need time, it also needs the planet itself to become permissive. Or basically here the planet has to have a kind of a window of habitability. A key example here would be oxygen. Complex animal life requires high levels of atmospheric oxygen, and so the oxygenation of Earth, driven by earlier microbial life, took a long time, but once the condition was met, the window of opportunity for complex life opened naturally. And so in this case, researchers argue that we shouldn't base predictions on the lifespan of the Sun, but on the geological timescale. The time it takes for the atmosphere and the landscape to change. And so according to their study, humans evolved just on time, specifically when the conditions were perfect for such evolution to happen. And so for the scientists behind this study, if evolution unfolds at a planetary pace, here we suddenly have a dramatic increase in probability that life similar to ours possibly exists elsewhere. Because in this case, we're no longer just talking about some kind of a mathematical probability or chance, we're talking about some major steps that happen because of the outcomes of planetary maturation, or basically geological evolution, that can also happen on other planets out there. And testing this idea should not be very difficult. By searching atmospheres of exoplanets and by discovering biosignatures such as oxygen, we can then confirm if these unique evolutionary steps could happen elsewhere, or if our planet is indeed unique in some way. And so in essence here we have two somewhat competing, but somewhat reasonable explanations and propositions for why intelligent life could be super rare, but also for how intelligent life could maybe exist elsewhere in just the right planetary conditions. But this entire cosmic mystery, the Fermi Paradox and the Great Filter, is perhaps the most important scientific question we face, mostly because the answer directly informs us of humanity's future risks. For example, if life is actually very common and if alien life technically exists everywhere, we are then faced with the realization that somewhere along the path of advancement, from simple life to extremely intelligent life, probably because of some kind of an explosive technological advancement, there seems to be another filter, a giant hurdle. Something that possibly stops the life from advancing further, which is why we're not seeing any intelligent life out there trying to communicate, at least as of 2025. And so, for example, if this great filter lies in our past, as suggested by the 2021 study, or basically implying that abiogenesis and other steps are just incredibly hard to reach, then we are indeed fantastically rare, but at the same time, our future might be safe. We don't really have much to worry about for at least the next 200 million years. We won the cosmic lottery, and the universe is quiet because, well, nobody else did. There seems to be, at least for now, just one winner. But if this great filter is ahead of us, meaning that these early steps were easy and a lot of planets should have achieved these steps, which is what the counter-argument from the 2025 paper proposes, then our future is indeed bleak. It would suggest that the universe is silent because advanced civilizations that possibly evolved in the past also face some kind of an existential hurdle, such as for example a technological self-destruction, with one obvious example being some kind of an uncontrolled artificial intelligence that evolves and destroys everyone. Or maybe some kind of an ecological collapse that prevents a civilization from becoming too complex. And this is why, contrary to what you might think, finding evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there is possibly bad news. Because in this case, a signal would imply that these extremely difficult biological steps in our past were surprisingly easy to overcome, but there might be still some kind of a massive filter waiting for us in the future. But at least for now, until we actually find something, the most likely conclusion is that becoming intelligent is exceptionally, wonderfully, statistically improbable. And though this great silence is still profoundly challenging to explain, it also helps us to explore the possibility that our own existence is just an astronomical fluke. Which also means that we probably should take our future survival and the unique conditions on our planet maybe just a little bit more seriously. Because as far as we can tell, at least at the moment, we are likely all there is out there.
But because this is such a fascinating concept and because there are so many things I want to explore and discuss, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, check out the playlist on the Fermi Paradox in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership it grants you early access. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.